Well, hey folks, it's E-Chip with Contentment Channel, and I uh, got a little project going today. I uh, just finished up all of our dishes. i got to get those dried and put away so I can clear this area. I've got to do some work down here. The water heater, the hot water that's coming out of there, is smelling pretty, pretty badly like sulfur, you know, swamp smell. Um, there are, you know, of course we live right next to the wildlife refuge, and during the summer months when the water tables up and you know those uh, sort of bayou like and slough like areas out there um, uh, have a bunch of uh, sulfur um, I guess iron loving bacteria out there uh, that uh, create sulfur as a byproduct it's not harmful uh, but it does get into the groundwater I guess and so it gets it's gotten into our well and so the hot water really smells. If you let it go too long, it'll migrate over into the pressure tank, the cold water side. So we've got to figure out how to fix this. So this is our property line here, but uh, looking right over the fence, uh, our property borders a wildlife refuge, as uh, many of you know who watch our channel. And uh, down there in that wildlife refuge, back where the tree, that small tree line is back there is the river. But as you can see, there are also some areas of water, uh, standing water. And these are old, you know, extinct courses of the river. Uh, that have cut through this uh, delta valley or whatever you want to call it and seasonally they pool up with water after snow melt and uh, so that's why this is a wildlife refuge it attracts all kinds of birds you know geese and terns and cranes and uh, all kinds of critters but uh, it also because you get a lot of standing water it creates some uh, and we don't smell it very much, just on certain warm days when it's still uh, in the summer. A little bit of swamp gas, that's sulfur dioxide, I think, that's produced by uh, iron-eating bacteria that are in the soil and water. And that water level there is roughly equal to our well water static level. Um, we also have uh, some of those critters that I guess set up in our well. Uh, and they create this smell. Now they're not harmful. You know, you can still drink the water and stuff like that, but you don't want to. I mean, it smells awful. Um, you don't want to do dishes. Uh, you don't want to wash anything. You don't want to bathe in it because it smells. So we have a solution for this problem. Uh, most anode rods that are inside water heaters, those are the ones that keep the heater from rusting out, um, are magnesium. Uh, but we can replace the anode rod in this with an aluminum one, which Robert got last time she was in the city. And uh, as you can see, it's adjustable. It bends. You can bend it. Let me show you. It's aluminum, so it bends pretty easily. And you can cut it to length, too. And uh, so we got one that's made to go in the water heater here. And uh, we'll just uh, we'll drain the pressure tank over there. We'll drain that pressure tank, we'll drain the water heater, and then we will, uh, you know, pull the water heater out a little bit, replace the anode rod, put it back in, and then uh, just to get rid of uh, some of the bacteria that uh, are probably already in the well water, uh, I'll go ahead and dump a little bleach down in the well, let it sit, uh, we'll let it circulate through this system as well for a little while and uh, you know clean out those critters but aluminum anode rods are good at preventing this issue so hopefully after we get this in uh, we should have no problems okay all right so the first order of business is to turn off the well pressure we don't want it pumping water to the system and i'll unplug the water heater and then of course the next thing to do would be to unplug the water heater Take away that power. Uh, we have a solar powered water heater. Yes, it's electric. We live off grid and have an electric water heater. <laughs> um, we, uh, we're careful about how 
you know, much energy it takes from our batteries and things like that. So we're very careful to heat water uh, only when the sun's doing really well and we're producing a lot of extra energy and things like that. tight as I could. I'll release this little to drain the water out. I do have some pressure built in the line so I'm going to get a little bit of a mess here but it's all draining outside anyway. It's a good opportunity to clean out the pressure tank anyway in case there's some well sediment or something like that in the bottom of it. It's a good idea to drain your water heater and pressure tank if you have a well pretty regularly. I mean, a lot of sediment, even tiny stones can get uh, caught in the system uh, in the tank. And then if your water's hard, uh, it'll build up sediment in the bottom of your hot water heater. So. Not a bad idea, you know, at least once a year, in my opinion, to drain those things and uh, get that stuff out of there, flush them out real good. And then opened up some faucets to let the system drain some more. It's the gurgling sound you're gonna hear. When that stops, I'll turn my attention to the water heater here. I'm gonna have to disconnect that and then that and scoot this out a little bit. It's going to be a mess, but it uh, needs to be done. And the shower system's continuing to drain very slowly. Go get the tools I need for this. Okay, so I got my well head open while I'm waiting for the things to drain. I've got about a half a gallon here of, well, even less than that, of bleach. Um, how much bleach to use, you know, to kill this bacteria? It doesn't take much. I mean, you know, maybe maybe 50 parts per million and in this well i mean that would be probably equal to about the you know third of a gallon i've got here so i'm just going to pour it down there now bleach is corrosive you got to be careful with it but i mean most things in a well are uh, made with stainless steel so i'm gonna let while i work on this this bleach will go to work in the well water it will sink um, and it will permeate that well water. And then when it pumps back up, it'll pump that, that, uh, sanitized water will pump into, uh, the system. It'll fill the hot water tank. It'll fill the pressure tank and it'll fill the lines and pressure them all up with, you know, uh, good sanitizing water to kill any bacteria or anything that may be in those lines and in those tanks. And it looks like systems drain. Let's get on that water heater. Thank you. Just a crescent wrench. Shit's been off my hand now. Let's see. Yep. All right, so I got the water heater pulled out. There is where we'll remove the old magnesium anode rod. See, it says it's upside down, but it says anode. Here's the new anode rod. And uh, so I'll just unscrew it. Screw the new one in. Okay, so there's like this little protective washer, plastic washer that fits over this thing right here. I pulled it off to get easier access to the nut. Uh, is that a one inch? No, it's not. So it looks like a one and a sixteenth, which I am fortunate to have. So I'm gonna go. You could also use a pipe wrench. The chip is having trouble. Getting this loose, loose, loose. We'll get it. I guess I could sit on it. It wouldn't hurt.
Stripping well, good night. After trying and trying and trying to get this thing off, it's just stripping out. I cannot get it off, not even with a pipe wrench cramped down. And you know, part of the problem is the thing wants to spin while you're trying to do it. I laid it on the floor, tried to put our weight on it, everything. It just won't do it. But it's okay. I mean, I have other holes here that I can put this in, and I can leave the old anode rod in. It's not hurting anything. So here's the new uh, anode rod, which is adjustable. I can bend it. Um, the, the, the question I have is whether I'll be able to thread it once I get it in. I don't know if I will. I might hit things inside like the other anode rod, that kind of stuff. So I may have to cut it. But yeah, I can have two anode rods in here. And since one of them is aluminum, uh, Hopefully it'll take care of this uh, smelly water problem. Okay. So what exactly is an anode rod and why is it, why is it important? Uh, this is a section of the anode rod that I just broke off because it's too long. But it's basically, in this case, it's a piece of aluminum that has a piece of stainless steel wire running down the middle of it. Stainless steel is not corrosive, okay? But the aluminum is. And as water flows through things, particularly metal, um, creates a condition called electrolysis, where there's an exchange of electrons between the metals uh, and either the ground uh, that it sits in, if it's copper pipe or, you know, something like that. So uh, this over time causes corrosion and um, it can corrode out the steel tank. Um, so designers have you know, and engineers have tried to fix this by creating, by inserting a rod into the tank that can corrode instead of the tank itself. So the exchange of electrons occurs more readily uh, on this rod, whether it be magnesium or aluminum, than it would uh, on the uh, sides and edges of the tank. And so that's why these are here. They're, they're meant to be removed, sacrificed, you know, you'll see, if I could get this one out of here, you would see some corrosion on it where the magnesium rod would begin, would have begun to corrode. And unfortunately, I can't get it out. So, as I said, I'm installing this one uh, in here. Instead, that is, if it's, if I didn't leave it too long, maybe I've still left it too long. Huh. Well, maybe I have. Maybe I need to cut some more off. But, uh, so this will corrode first. And in this case, uh, these bacteria do not like the aluminum. And so I guess it kills them, prevents them, keeps them from setting up shop in the tank because these, uh, these uh, hydrogen sulfide producing bacteria like iron and they don't like aluminum. So anyway, I think I need to cut a little bit more of this off so it'll screw down in there properly. Let's get this done. All right, water heater's hooked up again. I've got a hose hooked to the uh, uh, drain uh, hose bib back there, drain cock, whatever you call it. I made sure that this drain uh, cock hose bib is closed so that when I pressure it up, water doesn't come pouring out. The only place that water should be coming out is through that hose and uh, outdoors. So pressure it up. All right, let's turn the bag off. There we go. There goes the well starting to pump. And that liquid bleach should have had enough time to permeate the water column in the well there. So let's see what's going on. Robert hasn't hollered at me yet. All right. Here's our water coming out of the bottom of the tank. All right. No leaks. Of course, we're not really pressured up yet. Just got a few pounds of pressure running through there. Okay, we should have flushed the tank enough by now. I'll go ahead and close that so we can pressure up. Yeah, 
and now the hot water tank should be filling up. Let's hope the anode rod does its job. I bleach out the system just to kill any black bacteria. Gonna let that bleachy water sit in here for a while uh, before we really use it and uh, let it do its thing. And then uh, if, uh, if it doesn't work, I'll let you know. How about that? But uh, that's how you botch a job uh, replacing the anode <laughs> in a water heater. <laughs> Bye.